our administrator for business services in the school district. I have prepared a brief overview of the budget development process and following that overview, Mr. Miller will provide you with a more detailed description of the budget and respond to any questions that you may have. With the development of the budget, it is important that the budget reflects the district's vision and mission. The vision sets the course and direction for the district by describing what we believe we must become. The mission of our school district describes our purpose and focuses directly on the service we provide our students. Throughout the 2014-15 budget development, our purpose has continually been focused on student learning and development. Specifically, we must educate and inspire students today and prepare, prepare them for tomorrow by ensuring that all students learn at high levels as they develop 21st century skills. So that our students have opportunities, we must continue to grow our partnership with the entire community. And finally, we know that we must operate and act in a fiscally responsible manner while ensuring well-rounded educational experiences. The board developed and adopted core values that guide our behavior as an organization. We are committed to data-driven decision-making, focusing on results in these four areas of student learning, continuous improvement, visionary leadership, and respectful behavior. The district's six focus areas provide us with a framework of what we believe is most important in measuring our progress in meeting our vision and mission. Those six areas begin with student learning, where we will provide a rigorous relevant curriculum and high quality instruction to prepare all students for the future. And performance excellence, where we focus on adopting and demonstrating a district-wide systematic research-based and aligned approach to improvement. Our cust customer and stakeholder focus area really is where we will engage our customers and that includes our students and all our other stakeholders in the vision and mission by listening to their voice building relationships with them and valuing their input to identify opportunities for improvement and fiscal sustainability where again we provide and sustain the highest level of student learning in a fiscally responsible manner Another focus area is workforce, our people, where we will ensure a workforce environment conducive to, to high performance and is aligned with the, mis the mission and vision of the school district. And leadership, where we engage and empower others throughout our school community so that the collaborative efforts of all support the shared vision and mission. The school district has operated on a school-based decision-making process, relying on the leadership at the building and department level and other program areas to establish the goals needed to meet the building or program mission and district mission. With that, the constituent involvement is important to the process. The school board sets the budget limits and asks the administration to develop a budget based on the needs. And then the school board approves new items that come into the budget which generally are on a prioritized basis and need. Over the years, the Board of Education has established criteria that it has asked administration to follow in developing the budget. And among that list of criteria includes such things as maintaining an appropriate student-teacher ratio in the classroom, committing to the continuous improvement and development of our staff, Enhancing the use of technology throughout the district. The district has worked hard in the area of curriculum instruction. So many things are changing, continually to change. And we continue to focus on the evaluation component of that improvement process as well. Energy con conservation continues to be a priority. The purchase and maintenance of our district's outstanding transportation fleet. Maintaining our facilities. Revenue limits are statutory requirements by the state that tell the district how much money they can put in their budget. And of course, we must follow that. In trying to stay under the limits, we still must meet all our mandates. 
The positive impact on student achievement is always looked at when considering new programs. Maintaining a fund balance that meets the financial performance target approved by the Board of Education and necessary to meet all current financial obligations while without borrowing from other funds or outside lenders. There is nothing more important than providing a quality learning and work environment that make that makes sure our students and our staff are healthy and safe. Already alluded to uh, and mentioned that we take into consideration the number of students impacted on any decision made. And when we have vacant positions, we evaluate those to make sure it is still necessary in order to provide the needed services. A quick review of the budget development timeline. The 2014 budget process started back in August of 2013 with the board approving the process including the calendar. In November, administrators and supervisors submitted budgets along with unmet needs. In December, the board identified initial assumption input variables so that administration could develop a projected budget by looking at the anticipated revenue dependent on student enrollment projections and costs based on the prior year. The board approved a preliminary budget in March and just recently a proposed budget in September. The board will then approve a final or original budget and certify the levy at the second board meeting in October. So a few observations to share with you include that in 2013-14, we continued to respond to changes locally at the state level by making the necessary adjustments in our budget planning. Fortunately, due to a lot of hard work by our budget authorities and staff, we ended the 2013-14 budget year favorably. The surplus at the end of the year should not mean that it was an easy year or even that all our needs were met. That's not true. However, we were able to direct resources to areas in which we believe continue to align with our vision, our mission, our focus areas, including curriculum instruction, staff development, technology, facilities, and transportation. The 2014-15 budget includes increases to annual and or one-time allocations in a number of critical areas. We have added over $500,000 in increased staffing. Increased allocations are targeted to help us address needs in priority areas in which we have either not kept up with or we believe we will be experiencing additional mandates that we must fund for this coming school year. As with last year, I will continue to caution us as we move into the 2014-15 school year of several variables and unknowns at this time that could change our financial picture, beginning with student enrollment. We project an increase in the number of students compared to last year, but we'll not know for sure the number until the third Friday count, which we are just uh, undergoing, uh, is finalized. We are projecting an enrollment growth rate, again, of about 1.5%. But I would caution everyone that those numbers can change as we begin or as we continue to move through the school year. We continue to examine our budget process to look at potential ways to improve how we allocate and repurpose the dollars to areas believed to be most important and move us toward our vision. Increasing enrollment has an impact on us as we must manage increased needs in staffing and facilities, even though we only receive partial funding for every new student over, over a three-year period. But as a community, we have much to celebrate with the improvements, the ongoing improvements in care of our facilities, which of course is due so much to the wonderful support of our area community and that has for our students. Identifying facility needs is ongoing for our school district and community as a result of our growth. 
We also need to maintain the facilities that we have in order to keep them in quality condition for our students and staff and to also prevent large expenses down the road. Mr. Jay Clark will present more information on our long range facility planning as part of the annual meeting later this evening. We continue to look at budget projections. We constantly look at the initiatives in the school district and, and to an attempt to address those over time to improve. Assessment is such a key focus as we help our staff understand how to best assess student learning and what actions to take to help students learn and be more successful. This will continue to be a priority for our staff development as we all also focus on collaboration through our well-established ongoing professional learning communities in order sh to share best practices in the classroom. We certainly are well aware of common core state standards, our smarter balance assessments, educator effectiveness. Those are just a few examples of the significant initiatives that must be reflected in our budget. So in conclusion, the budget must reflect our vision and mission of the school district. The budget needs to place students first while reflecting the input from constituents in our community taking place at every level in the school district. The budget reflects a growing student population and the needs that come with that growth. I would have to say that great scrutiny takes place of, of the budget at each level to make sure we have taken any items out before we advance it into the coming school year budget. Nothing is automatic as we continually prioritize the greatest needs, beginning with maintaining the appropriate teaching level as established by the board. This is an area I believe the board has expressed continued interest in making sure our dollars are being used in order to achieve our vision of educating every student to achieve global success. I believe our budget is fiscally responsible and yet we need to do more to address sustainability in some areas. So I hope that this overview has been helpful in providing you again with a snapshot of our development process for our budget and I'm going to now hand it over to Mr. Miller who will provide all of us with a more detailed description of the budget itself. Thank you. Thank you. This segment of the budget hearing provides budget details and allows time for questions. The handout materials you'll want to have at your side are the blue handout titled Budget Publication 2014-15, the tan handout titled 2014-15 Proposed Budget Summary, and the School District of Holman 2013-14 Annual Report. This will provide you with a beginning level, level of understanding of school finance. There will be time provided for questions or you may call or email. Our agenda will include the proposed mill rate and impact on individual property taxes. In that section, I'll review the proposed 2014 school property tax and the school property tax comparison with last year. Next will be the causes of proposed mill rate changes. In that section, I'll review the tax levy increase amount, revenue limit impact, state equalized aid impact, tax base growth amount, historical trends, and the combined impact of levy and tax base. I'll cover the annual meeting approval of the tax levy and finally the notable budget report changes from 2013-14 to 2014-15. The 2014 pro projected school mill rate is $11.74. This means that $11.74 per each 1,000 of fair market property value. This amount represents only the school district portion of your property tax bill. Municipal, county, and state changes also need to be considered. This rate is calculated on the fair market value, not the assessed value, which is determined by the municipality. The first column in this chart lists property value examples. The second column is the projected mill rate. And the third column is the school property tax amount. You would identify the fair market property value for your property 
take the mill rate and move the decimal point three places to the left, multiply the resulting factor by the property value to arrive at the school property tax amount. <clears throat> Last year, the, in 2013, the school mill uh, tax rate was $11.61 per $1,000 of fair market property value. The 1174 projected rate for the 2014-15 uh, school year is a 1.1% increase over last year's rate. This slide shows the 2013 school property tax amount on properties of differing values. This slide, this uh, column adds the 2014 school property tax amounts on properties of the same value using the projected 2014 tax rate. This shows the year-over-year -year increases that range from $13 on a $100,000 property to $26 on a $200,000 property. You can estimate the tax amount and increase on your property using these three examples. For example, a property of $125,000 would fall halfway between the first two examples. A property of $300,000 would be three times the $100,000 example. These increases in school taxes apply if the fair market value of your property remained the same from last year to this year. You would also need to adjust for any percentage increase or decrease in the fair market value of your property. If you refer to your annual report, page 19, this graph shows Holman's actual mill rate in relation to the state average and the MVC average. The school district of Holman mill rate is illustrated here by the blue line. The pink line is Mississippi Valley Conference and yellow line is the state average. The chart includes information from 2004 to 2014. The projected 1174 rate represents an increase over the prior year mill rate. By comparison, the 2010 mill rate of 1196 was the highest rate in the past 10 years. The historical changes in mill rate underscores the fluid nature of the budget and is largely the result of changes made in the state budget. The projected 1174 is a 1.1% 1 .1 increase over last year. The board has also set mill rate targets to control sudden fluctuations in the mill rate of plus or minus 5% of our own 10-year average and to index the mill rate to the state average of 20% of the 10-year average difference between Holman and the state. At 1174, the 2014-15 rate is predicted to fall within the state average target range. However, a rate of 1174 would likely exceed the target range set to control fluctuations. The board will give this further consideration as a final budget and mill rate are set in October. At this time, if there are any questions regarding the mill rate, we can take those. Any questions? The audience is free to ask questions as well. Okay. Hearing none, I'll continue with the next section. I would mention also that the final levy amount will be approved in October. This section will be talking about the proposed tax levy, um, which is projected to increase by 528727 or 3.4%. How did the district arrive at this amount? Our projected levy is the full amount of the state allows the district to in increase its revenues under the revenue limit formula. The revenue limit formula allows the district to increase revenue up to 1,042,716. An increase in state aid of 677,439 helps offset this increase. This results in a tax increase of 365277 in the general fund. Our referendum approved debt is not bound by the revenue limit formula and the levy amount necessary to meet our debt service obligations is 163450 more in 2014, resulting in a net tax levy increase of 528727. The total tax levy is projected, as I mentioned, to, five, to increase 528727 
Just as with the tax rate, putting the tax levy increase into perspective requires looking at more than the most recent year. Please refer to your blue handout. If you look at page two, the bottom section of the budget publication. See the line total tax levy column three and four, which is projected to increase by the 528-727 to 16,061,398, or a 3.4% increase. This increase over last year represents the combined effect of 365,277 general fund increase and the 163,450 debt service levy increase. As mentioned earlier, the tax base or equalized property value also affects the school property tax bill. This chart provides equalized property value information back to 2002. Our preliminary estimated tax rate is based upon a 2.2% increase in equalized property values. 2.2% equals 29 million in growth. Growth over the last five years has averaged 1.6%. This is favorable considering the statewide trends of property value have decreased over the last five years. Recent information in municipal growth suggests 2.2% is a fair estimate. As an overview, the tax rate is determined by dividing the total tax levy by the total equalized property value. The preliminary estimate of the tax levy is, as you see there, 16,061,390. The preliminary estimate of equalized property value is 1,368,500,753. This results in a tax rate of 0.01174 which translates into a mill rate of $11.74 per $1,000 in property value. This mill rate, as mentioned before, is an increase of 1.1% over the prior year. While the community will be asked to give the board authority to set levy, the final levy will not be set until October and is based on final information. This information includes September membership counts, equalized valuation within the school district and equalized aid. This re represents the recommended motion presented um, during the annual meeting. This has been presented in the same format since the inception of the revenue limits. Are there any questions on the mill rate or tax levy section? Patrick, Mr. Barlow. Hello. Keep talking and we'll go on. Yeah. Um, just a quick question on if you could maybe go back just two slides about the uncertainties yet. Right Looking, there. I guess the concern as we hear issues at the state level of lower than expected tax revenues coming in, and there's also something going on in November, I'm not quite sure. It's a big decision that might be happening as well. How? How sure are we about the, the number that we might get in the state aids? How uncertain is that number? What's the district's feeling on that particular issue? Any guidelines we're getting from our consultants? Anything like that? We do have a consultant that we've utilized in um, coming up with these estimates. Of course, they are estimates at this point and, and could change. Um, as, as soon as we are made aware of those changes, we roll those into the budget. Um, I am not aware of any other um, large changes to those numbers. I, I don't know if any else in the, uh, on the board or, or administration are. Um, but at this point, this is, this is what we're, we're basing it on. It's, our, it's a best estimate, yes. Right. Thank you. Any other questions? Next, we'll talk about the notable budget uh, report changes. <clears throat> now I'll refer to the tan color document that uh, or one of the handouts. The first notable change I would like to share is the fund balance. On page one, line seven, the 2014-15 total ending fund balance, column D, is 9,835,957. Nine now look one column to the left on line seven and see the unaudited total ending fund balance in 
you'll see that the total ending fund balance in 2014-15 is budgeted to be 98,145 less than the total ending fund balance of the prior year. This change in fund balance from one year to the next is determined by the amount of revenue and expenses during the year. See how the total ending fund balance in one year becomes the beginning fund balance for the next year. For example, see the total ending fund balance in column C becomes the beginning fund balance in, in column D. So therefore, the beginning fund balance for 1415 line one is then increased by the revenue for the year and reduced by the expenses for the year. The 98,145 reduction in fund balance results from 2014-15 budgeted revenues being less than budgeted expenses. When expenses exceed revenue, this, that is more money going out than coming in, it is called deficit budgeting. This slide provides further detail on the difference between beginning and ending fund balance. You can see a fund balance decrease of 98,145 based on an operating uh, deficit. The net effect is a reduction in fund balance to the nine, shown 9,835,957. Referring now to page one, line 10, this slide shows the increase in taxes for general operations. As presented on earlier slides, general fund tax levy is anticipated to increase 528,727. Line 10 shows an increase of 551.837 from last year to this year. The difference is dollars collected in the form of mobile home fees. These fees are, in, are a form of taxes that are included on line 10. Page 1, line 31 reflects an increase of approximately $300,000 associated with state categorical aid. State categorical aid includes common school funds, transportation aid, bilingual, bicultural aid, and the $150 per pupil aid offered through the 2013-15 biennium budget. Page one, line 32, state aid, general aid, is the equalized aid that we receive from the state. This amount was provided as an estimate by the state in July and is based on our prior year's expenditures, property taxes, property values rather, resident student count, and the total state allocation of resources. The increase in aid is the result of additional general aid appropriate, appropriated by the state in the biennium budget. Each district's impact is independent and is, de and is determined by comparing their local factors to the state determined and calculated figures. Page two of the report changes from the re revenue section of the report to the expenditure section. There is a subtotal instruction amount of 20,727,833, $20.7 million represents 48.2% of the total general fund expenditures. Lines 59 and 60, undifferentiated curriculum, primarily used uh, for the elementary school level and regular curriculum for art, math, language arts, music, science, social studies, encompasses a majority of the instruction budget. Line 65 of the, sub, the subtotal for instruction is 1.3 million greater than the prior year. This is due to an increase in salary and benefit expenditures as well as 2014-15 uh, dollars allocated to common core state standards, educator effectiveness, instructional technology, assessment, and the <coughs> curriculum review cycle. Line seven, 75 is the subtotal support services budget amount of 14,508,317. $14.5 million represents 34% of the general fund budget. 2014-15 budgeted expenditures represented in column D shows a decrease of 346,193 below the prior year's expenditures. This decrease is due in part to decreases in technology. Recall in 2013-14, there was an advanced purchase of computers of approximately $300,000. This advanced purchase was for replacement of aged desktop computers for teachers, student computer labs, and mobile devices. This accounts for the majority of the change. Line 76 
is the financial support that is necessary to fund the district's special needs programs. The 531,887 increase is due to increases in salaries and benefits. This slide shows the debt service uh, se debt services section. Page two lines 92 and 93 reflect the 2014-15 revenue and expenditure budget for the scheduled principal and interest payments of our long-term bonds. This concludes the notable budget changes uh, for 2014-15. There are any questions? Francis. It ranges, there are currently five bonds. They range from uh, one to three percent, I believe. I can double check that, but that's, a, that's approximately, yes. I have a question. Um, in the unaudited 2013-14 on page one, the fund balance, <coughs> we saw an increase, you know, um, from 12-13. And was that just as a result of budget monies that weren't spent from the previous year? Correct. Uh, primarily it was in wages and salaries of unfilled positions. Okay. Yes. And so then when we look at the budget for this year, it's very possible that while we, I think you talked about a negative budget, well, we may budget that way. The end result may also reflect, I think that's what it's been the last couple of years where we've actually had an excess at the end of the year, even though we may have budgeted right on or a little bit negative. Um, but the reality is the results are that we've actually been in the black that at is the correct. end of the year, so. Yes. We experienced that same scenario this past year where we entered the 2013-14 budget year with a planned deficit. I can't remember. I think it was in excess of $200,000. And yet we, uh, we were able to finish um, with a surplus. And so spending of that money is planned? Correct. Oh, from the from the prior year. Um, I'm not sure if I have that. Twenty nine. Well, twenty nine million was is the projected uh, increase. Yes. Two point two percent. Yes. How are we doing as far as questions? Well, I tell you, I think that that concludes our presentation this evening for our, the budget hearing. We want to thank everybody for your attendance, certainly those people that we wanted to ask some questions. Um, appreciate that as well. Um, at this time, I think we'll bring our hearing to a close, and then we, looking at the clock, 8 o'clock, we are set to begin the annual meeting. And we will um, wait until that time. So uh, I th we'll just come back at 8 o'clock. Thanks, everybody.